One year ago, I uploaded this channel's first video about the growing knife crime in London. Police tape and flowers, the grimly familiar ritual of another death on our streets. Since then, we've seen a massive rise in the number of subscribers to this channel, but also a rise in knife crime to the highest point in a decade. I tried to end the video on a positive note, detailing the government's plans on how to reduce all violent crime in the capital. One plan that has been implemented was putting true stories of the negative effects of carrying knives on chicken shop boxes. Real life stories of young people affected by knives are printed inside, and some young people aren't impressed. This campaign is a complete farce. Even if they read it, it's not going to stop them because they're still under, there's still issues at home they're, they're going to go back home to. There's still things, factors surrounding them in school, where, everywhere there's factors surrounding them in the community, even to start with exclusion rate. I think with the exclusion rates, tackling those problems in school first, not just in the chicken shop. They don't live in the chicken shop. One social aspect that wasn't explored in the last video was exclusion rates. Well, it's not rocket science, is it, to see that there's a link between the criminal justice system and children that aren't attending school. When I am in court, it could be the victims, it could be the perpetrators, but often the cases involve children that have been excluded. The best thing, obviously, would be to stop these children being excluded altogether. We can see that exclusion rates have indeed increased over the last few years, but linking these to crime is very difficult. We can also see that reoffending rates for juvenile crime has been on the increase. Almost 50% of juveniles who commit a crime commit another within two years. They are not being rehabilitated. So why embark along this route in the first place? Exclude a child and they may be more likely to commit a crime. And once they've committed a crime, they have almost a 50% chance of committing a crime again. Why not intervene earlier and remove the root cause of why people want to carry knives? The government has promised £100 million in funding for the Violence Reduction Unit, which treats violent crime as a public health issue. And this is the exact same video as last year. This is part of the Serious Violence Strategy published last year, which can be easily found online. It also states that tackling serious violence is not a law enforcement issue alone. But wait, he's quit now. And yeah, she's definitely gone too. Which means this guy is in charge. What we're committing to is a program of 40 new hospitals. Actually, um, I didn't say anything about, about Turkey. And we can appreciate full well the hurt and pain felt by already vulnerable Muslim women when they are described as looking like bank robbers and letterboxes. Yeah. So, so rather than hide behind sham and whitewash investigations, when will the Prime Minister finally apologise for his derogatory and racist remarks? So not much has changed in a year. The most interesting positive step is a British knife manufacturer has started making blunt tip knives, as knife crime itself keeps getting worse. And with a demonstrably turbulent government, it hasn't shown any signs of slowing down. It may be hard to feel positive while hearing this news and watching this video. It may also be hard to feel positive while seeing all the news about fires in Australia, how coronavirus will kill us all, and that's if the world doesn't completely end before then thanks to climate change. It is 100 seconds to midnight. The bearers of unbearable news. Time is almost up until the world is doomed. Now the Nobel laureate studded panel has moved it 100 seconds before a climate catastrophe. Without US leadership and participation, there will be no winners from this climate crisis. We will all become losers. In order to feel positive, you could perhaps start with something small, like writing to your MP, with your concerns and then step away from the news and focus on what really matters, your free time and hobbies, whatever they may be. And your relationships with your loved ones.
What if we could study people from the time that they were teenagers all the way into old age to see what really keeps people happy and healthy? We did that. The clearest message that we get from this 75-year study is this: good relationships keep us happier and healthier. Period. So share some love, give them a hug, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.